Well, the Gospel of Thomas is actually a collection of sayings uh, attributed to Jesus. Uh, what we have are 114 sayings uh, written in Coptic. The text that we have, the complete text of the Gospel of Thomas, is dated around the middle of the 4th century, we would say around 350 Common Era. And uh, we also have uh, a few fragments of this text that are dated earlier, somewhere around the end of the 2nd century, beginning of the 3rd century. They are called the Oxyrhynchus Papyri. And uh, they were written in Greek. There are three independent fragments written in Greek. Of course, when we talk about 114 sayings, these are modern designations, of course. The, the text itself does not have necessarily marked 114 sayings. So these sayings are basically secret sayings, as the, the text uh, indicates in its incipit which uh, states that these are the secret sayings that uh, Jesus uh, pronounced and that Judas uh, Didymus Thomas wrote down. And uh, they basically start most often with the same little formula, Jesus said, and then you have a saying. So they are stringed with this little introductory formula, Jesus said, and it talks about all sorts of things. Uh, a lot of the material is very similar to what we are used to a reading in the canonical Gospels, especially the Synoptic Gospels. With respect to uh, the relationship between the Gospel of Thomas and our more familiar Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels or canonical Gospels, uh, there are certain relationships because when you read it you have the impression that you've already read the material somewhere else if you're at least familiar with uh, the Christian tradition. This being said, there's a lot of things in Thomas also that are not found in the canonical Gospels that are particular to Thomas. Uh, a lot of scholarship has been divided over the question of is Thomas dependent on the synoptic tradition or is Thomas independent? on the synoptic tradition. There's actually no consensus on this question. Uh, it's, it's really in the middle, split in the middle, and um, a lot of ink has been spilled on trying to figure out uh, you know, the particularities of the synoptic tradition. Are they found in, in the Gospel of Thomas? You know, the redactional traits that we would call of each of the synoptic writers, is it, are they present? Uh, in the uh, in the Gospel of Thomas, and uh, it's it's very inconclusive. It's very difficult to, to figure this out, and and probably this is partially due to the fact of that the Gospel of Thomas itself. First of all, we have to remember that the only complete text that we have of this gospel is a fourth century text, and it is in Coptic, and there's a there's a. Um, we have to understand that the, the history of the tr transmission of this text is very, very complex. First of all, it came in a collection of texts. A collection that was buried uh, somewhere probably, according to estimations, somewhere at the beginning of the 5th century Common Era. And uh, when you look at this collection, when we found the collection of the Nagamadi texts, from which the Gospel of Thomas is found, uh, we found 13 books or codices. And uh, we've, uh, scholars have even studied uh, the coverings of each of these codices and uh, <clears throat> have come to the conclusion that these coverings were probably made somewhere in the, in the second half of the fourth century. The texts themselves have been also, uh, 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 first of all, copied. Uh, we have to say that before, before even talking about an original text of Thomas, they have been copied at one point uh, by Coptic scribes, and this we can see because there are different Coptic or scribal hands throughout the different, uh, the different books, the, the different codices. So um, they've been copied, but before being copied, they had been translated from possibly an original Greek text. Uh, they've been probably translated somewhere in the end of the second century and somewhere in the third centuries, uh, you know, around that time period, uh, they've, been, they've been translated from a Greek, 
possibly Greek original because we see you know, scholars or linguists that specialize in themselves in the, in the Coptic language uh, have the sense that behind the, the, the Coptic text there's a, a, a Greek text, there's a Greek we would say for lag. And um, so this being said, we have probably a full Greek text written somewhere in the second century. Uh, translated into Coptic, then recopied uh, or copied or transcribed by scribes in the third century, beginning of the fourth century, then buried in the fifth century. But we need to be very careful when we're talking about an original Greek text because we don't have access to this Greek text and we cannot rely necessarily ourselves on the Oxyrhynchus text because they're not reflective of what we read in the Coptic text. So probably that the Greek text from which the Coptic came from was different than the Oxyrhynchus papyri. So it makes it, it makes it almost impossible for us to kind of reconstruct a plausible Greek Gospel of Thomas out of the Coptic text. It's very, very complex. So to kind of determine the relationship between the synoptic gospels, or at least the Greek synoptic gospels, and the Coptic that we have is very, very complicated. Because even the Coptic that we have, even the Coptic text that we have, it's even possible that those that transcribed the Coptic from the translation, they could have aligned their Coptic text to the Coptic New Testament. So the situation is basically a quagmire of complexity. And I think that uh, we should focus on other avenues of research. Uh, I don't, th I, I'm not saying it's not, it's not interesting to try to figure out, okay, uh, who copied who at one point, but it's a bit of, uh, uh, a bit of guesswork because uh, it's, it's nearly impossible for us to actually have a handle on which New Testament Greek text did the Gospel of Thomas, or at least the Coptic Gospel of Thomas that we have uh, come from. The future of research is quite exciting uh, on the Gospel of Thomas. If we manage to get ourselves out of what I consider a bit of a quagmire with respect to independency, dependency uh, on the synoptic tradition. Uh, Thomas has uh, so much more to offer. I know that uh, it's, it's always interesting to try to figure out its origins, but as we've discussed, the complexities are there. Uh, but we, if we focus on, on what the text actually means, I think this is our job as exegetes to try to figure out what it means, uh, to try to, to interpret the text. And, and, and basically, when you read the Gospel of Thomas, this is what the compiler of the, of the Gospel actually invites you to do. Uh, the first Logion, eh? Whoever, whosoever finds the interpretations of these sayings, the interpretation of these sayings, will not experience death. So there is a call uh, on the part of the compiler to actually uh, embark on a quest for meaning, in search of wisdom and meaning that only Thomas can actually offer. And uh, it's interesting because uh, there's a kind of a an eschatological dimension uh, related to the to the, the to this interpretation of the of the of the text that you will not experience death. That means you will not, you will never die. You will obtain eternal life. It's a bit the equivalent of what we can find in some of the promises uh, found in in the New Testament. But here it's related to the meaning of the text. So it is important that we actually engage in 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 the in the interpretation and meaning of the text. And it's quite, uh, it's quite possible to do so. It's not uh, uh, just a, a, a purely subjective enterprise. We have actually in Thomas formal features that help us actually uh, define some of the ways we can interpret the text. Uh, pretty much every scholar will recognize that the Gospel of Thomas is stringed, the sayings are stringed with a series of catchwords. You have different catchwords between sayings, uh, different types of words like uh, the kingdom, or light, or life, or the elect. So if we kind of try to figure out, okay, what, how, how are these catchwords 
uh, placed? Uh, where do they come? Uh, do, they, uh, do they form certain inclusions in the text? Uh, do, they, do they exhibit certain structures of the text? Then we can try to uh, create what I consider being a network of meaning where meaning emerges from uh, the various types of catchwords that are put together uh, and, 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 and we can figure out what, what actually the text means. I'll give you a, a very short example and, and you can do this uh, pretty much with every uh, logion or saying in the Gospel of Thomas. There's a, a series of, of logia uh, Logia, uh, Logion 49 to 54 that are, are quite intriguing where the emphasis seems to be on election. Um, the, the series of, of, of Logia open up with a beatitude. Eh? It starts with blessed are those and it finishes in Logion 54 with another beatitude, blessed are, are those. And in between, you have a series of questions and answers that deal with election. Who are the true elect? Uh, you have that in, in Logion 50. And who are the false elect, uh, the uncircumcised, in the, uh, the uh, Logion 53? And in between all of that, you have issues pertaining to identity again and eschatology. So if you look at the Gospel of Thomas and try to figure out, okay, how do the catchwords operate? How do they, uh, uh, you know, create a chain of meaning between each of the sayings? Uh, then you, you start understanding what the Gospel of Thomas is really about. And this is where scholarship needs to go. You know, in the past 15, 20 years, we've been dealing a lot with issues pertaining to origins and, and uh, of the Gospel of Thomas, who came first, the Gospel, uh, the, the Gospel of Thomas or the Synoptics, uh, is it related to the uh, historical Jesus? All of these questions are, are, are interesting in and of themselves, but uh, a lot of it is speculation because of the complexity of the text, as we've discussed already, the complexity of this text being a 4th century text, the only complete text that we have. So if we start focusing on meaning, I think we will be much more fruitful and a lot of exci exciting things can come out of this fascinating text. My current research on the Gospel of Thomas, in fact, there's two things. There's two books that I'm uh, actually preparing. One is uh, a, 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 a new English translation with a short introductory com uh, commentary. Uh, on the Gospel of Thomas in English for uh, the uh, collection Apocaeth uh, Brepals. Uh, I'm hoping that this will come out soon. And the other one is a, is a major project. It's in relation to uh, the Bibliothèque Cop de Nagamadi, which is based at uh, Université Laval in Quebec City. Uh, I am uh, one of the collaborating researchers on the Nagamadi Library there, uh, the critical editions and, and the new uh, French translations, and I was bidden, I have been given the uh, the privilege of um, being in charge of the critical edition of uh, the Gospel of Thomas, a critical edition, new French translation, and commentary. And uh, this is a project that is uh, due in a couple of years, but uh, I'm working hard to get things done. Uh, pretty exciting. Uh, this is uh, this is quite an opportunity to be associated with this project at the uh, University of Nevada.